Oh my god, I don't want to be here right now. I wish we were back in quarantine. Ah. Good morning, everyone. I trust that everyone is well and safe. Before we begin, does anyone want to tell me anything fun they did on the weekend? Yeah, I do. I just met with my bunny. Wow, nice. What types of problems did you do? Some, some SAT math. Guys, don't laugh at him. That's great. Okay, thank you, thank today you. I hope you all have your videos ready. Um, I see someone that's not paying attention to me, so Daniel and Zach can go first. Daniel, wake up. Sorry about that. Okay, you guys can show your videos first. Okay, so today we are solving trigonometric equations. And our two objectives for solving trig equations are to use algebraic techniques to solve trig equations and to solve trig equations involving multiple angles. In this first example, we have two sine x equals one. When we're solving these trig equations, our first goal is that we wanna get our trig function by itself. So in this one, we would divide by two on both sides. Then our equation would say sine x equals one half. After we get our trig function by itself, the next goal in solving an equation is to get x all by itself. So we're gonna use inverse trig operations here. So we're gonna do the inverse sine in order to get that x by itself. So inverse sine cancels with sine and we get x equals the inverse sine of one half. Now, if we're looking at our unit circle, remember the sine is the y value and a y value of one half happens at two places on our graph. It happens at the angle pi over six and the angle five pi over six. Remember that the sine has a period of two pi and that the sine functions are periodic, meaning that they repeat themselves. So these aren't the only two answers because all of our coterminal angles would also have a sine value of one half. So to account for all those coterminal angles, the way we write it out is that we say the solutions for this would be that pi over six plus our two pi period times any n number of rotations. And then we would also have our five pi over six plus that two pi times any n number of rotations. And these two things would be our final answer. In this next example, we are going to be solving trigonometric equations using multiple angles. The problem we have here is sine of 2x equals 1 half on the interval 0 to 2 pi. Before we begin, it is important to have a basic understanding of the unit circle so that this can be made possible. So, using the unit circle, we know that sine is equal to 1 half at pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. So we're going to separate those solutions as two separate parts of the problem. So here you can see that we changed it to 2x equals pi over 6 plus 2 pi n and 2x equals 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. Now the n is there because we need to consider different integer values to generate the full set of solutions because the sine function is periodic which means that it's repeating itself every 360 degrees or 2 pi. So to isolate x, we're going to divide or we're going to multiply by one half on both sides. And let's say we're doing the, the left side of the problem first, you're going to end up with x equals pi over 12 plus pi n. And then we're going to need to utilize different integer values of n. So let's say you plug in zero first, you're just going to leave, you're just going to end up with pi over 12 as a solution. And then if you plug in 1 for n, it's the same as pi over 12 plus 12 pi over 12, or just 13 pi over 12. And then let's say you plugged in 2 pi. Um, if you plugged in 2 for n, then you're going to have pi over 12 plus 24 pi over 12. But you're not going to consider that a solution because it is out of the interval 2 pi. You're then going to do the same exact thing on the other side of x equals 5 pi over 12 plus pi over n. So let's say we plug in 0 for n, you're just going to be left with 5 pi over 12. Then let's say you plug in 1 for n, you're going to be n, you're going to end up with 5 pi over 12 plus 12 pi over over 12. 
and then that would just be 17 pi over 12. And then let's say you plug in two for pi, I mean two for n, it's gonna be the same thing that happened before and it's gonna be outside of the interval two pi. Man, that was the same question. Okay guys, that was great, who wants to go next? Ferdinand, you're not paying attention. Your group uh, can- He's always gaming. Sorry, sorry, here, here's my video. Boys, enough, you're next, go. Hello, today we're gonna find the integral of radical 8x plus nine using u substitution. First, you have to find your u value, in this case being 8x plus nine, so I'm gonna write that down. u is equal to 8x plus nine. Next, we have to derive the function so that we can replace uh, dx. So du is equal to eight dx. Now to solve for dx, you get du over eight, which equals one over eight du. Now we plug in dx back into the original equation with this value and you get one over eight times the integral of u to the one half times du. Now from here on out, it's a simple integration problem, only multiplying by one over eight at the end. So you get one over eight times the integral, which is u to the three over two over three over two du. To get rid of the fraction at the bottom, you have to multiply by its reciprocal, 2 over 3. So rewriting this 1 over 8 times 2 over 3u to the 3 over 2. Now we just combine these two uh, numbers to get 1 over 12u to the 3 over 2, which is the same thing as the cube root of u squared over 12. Now we plug in u back into the equation to get the cube root of 8x plus 9 squared over 12, which is your final answer. <laughs> so Shriek, this you see the picture? You see the problem I sent you? It looks kind of off. Do you think I forgot something? Freddy, you forgot the plus C. Let me show you how it's done. Mine is the integration of 24x squared times sine of x cubed dx. If we make u equal to 24x squared, you'll get du is equal to 48x dx, which doesn't cancel out with anything because there's only x squared and x cubed. So we make u equal to x cubed, and then you get du is equal to 3x squared dx, when you rearrange for dx, you get du over 3x squared equals dx. Now you substitute that back into the equation, you get 24x squared times sine of u, because u is equal to x cubed, times du over 3x squared. When you rearrange, you get 24x squared over 3x squared times sine of u du. Now simplify 24x squared over 3x squared, you get 8 times the integration of sine of u du. 8 times the integration of sine of u is negative cosine of u which is equal to negative eight cosine, and then u is equal to x cubed, so you, you rearrange that back in, negative eight cosine of x cubed plus c. Don't forget the c. Okay, good, it was good, but you don't need to clap so much. Okay, next. And you can go next. Okay. Hi guys, so today we're learning about the derivatives of inverse trig functions. So in order to do these type of problems, you have to know these rules. So for arc sine, it is x prime over the square root of 1 minus x squared. For arc cosine, it is negative x prime over the square root of 1 minus x squared. For arc tangent, it is x prime over 1 plus x squared. And for arc cotangent, it is negative x prime over 1 plus x squared. For arc secant, it is x prime over x times the square root of x squared minus 1. And for arc cosecant, it is negative x prime over x times the square root of x squared minus 1. 
Okay, so now let's do some example problems. Here we have f of x is equal to our tangent of x cubed, and we're taking the derivative of that. So remember that the derivative of our tangent is just x prime over 1 plus x squared, and our x here is x cubed. So f prime of x is equals to x prime, which is, in this case, 3x squared over 1 plus our x is x cubed, so x cubed squared. So let's simplify that. So f prime of x is equals to 3x squared over 1 plus x to the 6. And that is our final answer. Okay, so here we have another example. So we're taking the derivative of y equals x times arcsine of x. And here we have to use both the rules of inverse trig functions and the product rule. So remember that the derivative of arcsine of x is equals to x prime over square root of 1 minus x squared. Alright, so let's apply that. So y prime. So the product rule, so taking the derivative of the first part, which is x, so that's just 1. And then you keep the second part the same, which is arc sine of x, plus keep the first part the same, which is x times the derivative of the second part, which is just 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And the reason why the top is 1 is because x uh, the derivative of x is just 1. Alright, so let's simplify all of this. So y prime is equals to 1 times arc sine of x is just arc sine of x plus x over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And that is our final answer. Okay, that was good, and those taters are missing some butter, some spice, but that was good. Okay, Veronica, you're next. Where's Leah? She couldn't make it. She's in polo, but we did it Again. together. Again, oh my gosh, with the polo. Oh my gosh. Okay, it's fine. Show your video. Hey, everyone. So today, me and Leah are going to be explaining the first derivative test. So to start the first derivative test, we need to start off with a function. So let's start off with a function like this one. and with a set interval. Once we have something like this, we're able to start using the first derivative test. So now let me explain everything the first derivative test gives us. So the first derivative test gives us when the function reaches its highest or lowest value, in other words, maximums, maximums, and minimums and it also gives us critical values which is when the function goes from increasing to decreasing all we have to do to find those things are finding the derivative of a function and finding the critical values by making the by setting up the derivative to equal to zero and then once we do that, we find the critical values, and then all we have to do is plug in the numbers in the intervals to see when the, when the function goes from increasing to decreasing, which is when we get our maximums. So now I'm gonna go to Leah, and she's gonna show us an example of how to do that. Hey everyone, today we're gonna apply the first derivative test to analyze the function f of x equals negative x squared minus four x plus five. The first thing we need to do is derive this function with respect to f. This would give us f prime of x, and then using the power rule that we know, we know we would get negative 2x minus 4. Now we need to find the critical points. To do this, we set f prime of x equal to 0 and solve for x. Right. 
We're going to add 4, divide by negative 2, and we're going to get that x is equal to negative 2. Now that we have x equals negative 2, we know this is our critical point. So now we're going to use the first derivative test to determine whether it's a relative maximum, minimum, or neither. We'll choose test points to the left and the right of x equals negative 2 to evaluate f prime of x and see how the function behaves around this point. To do this, I'm going to make a simple graph that helps me keep my numbers in order. So we have negative infinity to negative 2 and then negative 2 to infinity. What we're going to want to do is plug in a point that is less than negative 2 and one that is greater than negative 2. When I plug in on this side, let's say I plug in negative 3, I'm going to go back to our derivative and I'm going to plug in negative 3. So, f prime of negative 3 is equal to negative 2 times negative 3 minus 4. This will give us 6 minus 4, which is equal to 2. 2 is a positive number or greater than 0. So all I'm going to put here is greater than 0. On this side, I want to plug in negative 1. So when we do this, we'll get two minus four, which gives us negative two. This is a negative number, which means that it is less than zero. Since f prime changes from positive to negative at x equals negative two, as we can see here, we can conclude that f of x has a relative maximum at x equals negative 2. And that's how we apply the first derivative test to analyze the function f of x equals negative x squared minus 4x plus 5. Wow, that was the best video I've seen today. I never knew that Veronica and Leah were so good at calculus. They need to take BC. I need them in my class. Well, guys, you all did good. I'll see you next time. Make sure to bring your assignments next class. Bye. 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 Daniel. Daniel. Daniel, class ended. Leave, leave, leave. Bye. Wow, I wish that was real.